Hi, this is Adam from Inflectra, and in today's video, we're going to be showing you how to create requirements and releases in SpiraTest. So the first thing to do will be to log into SpiraTest. So I'm going to log in as the built-in administrator user. And the password, for those who've got a new installation, is please change. And we do recommend that you change it as soon as possible. And when you log in, you'll come to this homepage, the My Page. And I'm logged in as sysadmin, which I'll see right here. And I need to go to a project that's empty to start entering information. And I should mention that this is the same um, plan as you'll see in the SpiraTest Quick Start Guide. So if you are using the Quick Start Guide, you'll recognize this and you can follow along at home. So when I go into my sample application 2, you're going to see it's initially empty. There's no requirements, there's no issues. It's a completely empty project. So the first thing we're going to do today is to find some requirements. So let's go into planning requirements. And you should see a screen like this with an empty requirements grid. So what we'll do is we're going to use the insert button to create some requirements. So what I'll do is, first of all, create my functional requirements heading, functional requirements. And what I can do is I could just insert the next requirements directly, or I could insert the child uh, and have it go as a child underneath. What I'll do, just to save some time, I'm going to create them all first, and I'm going to indent them when I'm done. But you can do it either way. So what I'll do now is type module one. And a little tip is, if you want to create another requirement, you can use the save and new to save yourself a click. So that's module one. And the next requirement under module one will be system must allow the entry of users. So we're doing some sample requirements for a project where we're going to be creating and modifying users. And the next requirement is, if you've created the users, we have to be able to modify them. So system must allow the modification of users. And of course, you might create them and then have to get rid of them. So the system must allow the deletion of users. Always good to have that. And then we'll have a second module, module two. I'm going to come back to this one so I can show you the insert child feature. Now for these ones, what I want to do is first move them all under functional requirements. So I check the boxes. I could also shift select and then do indent. And that's going to move them under functional requirements. And I also want to move these one level further. I can use the right click menu to indent or use the main toolbar. It's exactly the same. And lastly, let's create another requirement directly under module two. And I'll use the insert child feature to save some time. And this requirement is the ability for administrators to set up notifications. So system should allow the administrators to set up notifications. Hit save. We've now got our requirements tree and you can expand and collapse the tree like that. Or you can show different levels using the main navigation. I'm gonna show all levels like that. Well, we've got some requirements, but we haven't really prioritized them in any way. So it would be quite nice to prioritize them. So what we'll do next is prioritize some requirements. So to do that, we're going to choose the edit button. And the little shortcut is you can do select all right here and either hit this, this edit button here at the top or do the edit button on the toolbar and it makes everything editable. And we can now set some priorities. And so I'll go ahead and make module one pretty required, pretty critical. You can use the fill down to make them all critical and then unset the ones that are different. So let's say module two is medium and maybe the deletion is, is high, like that. And now I can hit the one save button and that will change all of them for me. Once that's done, I'm gonna have a nice list of prioritized requirements with color coding. So that's how you would create the requirements. Well, the next thing we wanna do is then add some releases. So to add the releases, we gotta move over to planning releases. And in this example, what we'll do is create two major versions and we will create some iterations or sprints if you're doing Agile under that. So let's create our main releases first. So I choose the insert feature and I'm going to create a release 1.0. I can use save and new. And you can set the dates for the start and end date of the release. Uh, for this demo, I'm not going to bother doing that, but feel free to do that when you do this yourself. So I've now got two releases, a major version and the next major version. 
Now I do want to have some iterations or sprints depending on your methodology under that. If you're doing a waterfall methodology, you do have the option of creating phases as well. And these items can either be a major release, a minor release, an iteration or a phase. And if you're doing agile, you'll typically do iteration for sprints or iterations. And for waterfall, you would typically do phases. So what I'll do is I'll create three sprints or iterations under my release. So I can do insert child iteration. I can do that again. And a third time. And now three iterations. And I'll just call them iteration 1.01. 1. Like that. And you can choose whatever name you like. It's going to create a version numbering scheme for you automatically. You can keep the one the system suggests, or you can use your own one. It's up to you. Hit save. I've now got my plan of releases and my iterations and sprints. So the last thing we want to do for today's web video is take these releases and then assign them to our requirements. So we know when these features are going to be implemented. And so what we'll do is we can use the same feature we did before to do the bulk editing. We can choose the edit and select all. So I'll do select all. To edit. And let's say we're going to schedule module one for release one, and we'll try and do as many of the things we can in the first sprint, but some will fall into the second sprint. So, that, so what we'll do is we'll mark module one as release one, and we'll mark uh, module two as release one. We'll get everything done in the first release, and we'll do these in the first sprint, and we'll do these in the second sprint, like that. Hit save, and now you'll see that all of our requirements have been assigned a release except for the functional requirements at the top. And these sprints that we have under the release, they actually roll, will roll up to the parent release. So in a future video, when we start to add test cases and record results, the test results will actually roll up the release and up the requirements. Uh, one last thing to note is that when you do assign a release to a requirement, it automatically changes to planned. And that planned status will roll up the hierarchy as well. We've now created some requirements and some releases. And in our next video in the series, we will be talking about how we create our test plan. So thanks for watching. And if you'd like to watch more videos about SpiroTest, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.